لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصلى الله على النبينا الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قال ابن قيم رحمه الله تعالى وضع الشيف في المحال مشروط بتفريغه من ضده Ibn Qayyim رحمه الله تعالى said that putting something in a place is conditional upon it being void of its opposite in order to put something in a place it has to be it has to be void of its opposite for the past couple of classes we've been talking about signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you and in order for us to be receptive to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then our hearts have to be void of its opposite which is the love or trying to be receptive to the love of creation. You can't do both things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma ja'ala li rajalan qalbaini fi jawfi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made for any one man two hearts. You only have one heart. And that heart belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise we begin to view the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the love of God in the same context in which we view the love of other, cre uh, other creatures, uh, other human beings. We begin to, we associate love with euphoric pleasure. That if you love me, you're not going to hurt me. You know? And we don't associate it with disappointment and dismay. And we become frustrated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah's love functions differently. Allah does things to us that may seem like, you know, if He doesn't love us, but it's actually an indication that He does love you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said the Hadith of Qudsi. قال الله تعالى إن من عبادي المؤمنين لمن يسألني الباب من أبواب العبادة فأغلقه عليه فَأَكُفُّهُ لِأَنْ لَا يُدْخِلُهُ وَالْعُجِبُ فَيُفْسِدُهُ ذَلِكُ وَإِنَّ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مَنْ لَا يُصْلِحُ إِيمَانَهُ إِلَّا الْفَقَرُ فَلَوْ أَغْنَيْتُهُ لَا أَفْسَدُهُ ذَلِكُ قَالَ إِنِّي لَأُدَبِّرُ أَمْرَ إِبَادِي بِعِلْمِ بِقُلُوبِهِمْ وَإِنِّي عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ سبحان الله That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that there are some from amongst my servants who ask me to open up a door from the doors of the many acts of worship, the many acts of ibadah, meaning to make this particular act of ibadah easy for them to do. He said, well, but I close the door on them. I don't open it for them. So that arrogance doesn't enter into his heart and destroy him. So here you are asking Allah, oh Allah, make it easy for me to do this. Oh Allah, make it easy for me to do this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no. We get upset because we're saying, I'm asking Allah to bless me with money so I can give more sadaqah. I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless me with you know, strength so I can fast more. And this is of course beyond what he made obligatory. He has given every one of us the strength to do what is obligatory. So that is not an excuse not to do what is obligatory. We're talking about going above and beyond the call of obligation. He says, so there are some from amongst my servants who may ask me to open up a door for them for a particular act of worship and I close the door on them. I don't open it for them. So that arrogance and pride doesn't enter into the person's heart for you've seen the hudadik and destroy him. He said, well, in the min ibadi al mu'mineen man la yuslihu imanahu illa al faqr there's some from amongst my believing servants that nothing will be good for their faith except poverty. I keep them poor. Here you are begging Allah, oh Allah, iftah alayya. Oh Allah, open the doors of you know, prosperity for me, of opulence. Make me wealthy, make me rich. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, I'm going to keep you poor. مَنْ لَا يُسْلِحُ إِمَانَهُ إِلَّا الْفَقَرُ فَلَوْ أَغْنَيْتُهُ لَأَفْسَدَهُ ذَلِكُ 
He said he asks me to, you know, bless him with wealth and I keep him poor because if I was to enrich him, that would destroy him. He said, I manage the affairs of my servants based upon my knowledge of their hearts, based upon what I know of their hearts. And I am all knowledgeable, all aware. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does things for us or to us, sometimes we may interpret it as this is a sign that God doesn't love me. But in fact, it may be a sign that he does love you because his love functions differently than the love of other human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his love is not contingent upon our desires, nor in conformity with it. Divine love functions differently. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ تَبَعَ الْحَقُّ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ لَفَسَدَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ فِيهِنْ that if the truth had been in accordance with their desires, then the heavens and the earth and everything in it would have been corrupted. The truth is not in accordance with your desires. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love is not in conformity with the way that you want things to be or the way that you associate love, the things that you associate love with. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you, He loves you. A sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you is that He tests you. Many of us, we test our spouses. We want to see if our wife loves us. So we'll push them to the limit. Sisters, sometimes you want to see if your husband loves you. So you'll push him to the limit. With your nuances and your character flaws, you test our patience. You test our tolerance. Because you want to see if we really, really love you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us in the same way. Do you think that you can say you love Allah and Allah is not going to test you to that? And we will test what you say about yourself and what others say about you. As Allah says in the Quran. And when you say things about yourself, I'm this, I'm that, I'm on the haq, Allah is going to test you to see whether you are really upon the haq. When you say, I love Allah, Allah is going to test you to see whether you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say that, you know, I'm a when you say that I'm religious, I'm spiritual, I'm practicing my religion, Allah is going to test you to that. This is why the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to always speak with caution because Allah is going to test you with the things that come out of your mouth. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a servant, and in another narration, he said, when Allah loves a people, he tests them. He tests them. But why? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test you? Is it to make your life more difficult, more complex than what it already is? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you because he wants to give you a greater reward. The greater the test, the greater the reward. In order for Allah to give you more, to give you a greater reward, he has to test you severely in order for your reward to be greater. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the authentic hadith, Inna idham al-jaza ma'a idham al-bala. Inna Allah idha ahabba abdin ibtalahu. Faman radiya falahu rida. Wa man sakhita falahu sakhtum. Ya'ni min Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that inna idham al-jaza ma'a idham al-bala. That the greater the test, the greater the reward. The greater the test, the greater the reward. When Allah loves a servant, he tests him. That whoever is pleased and satisfied with the test that Allah has given him, then for him is the pleasure of Allah. And whoever is dissatisfied and upset and angry that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested them, then for them is the anger and dissatisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll end with this. قال أحمد بن حنبل رحم الله تعالى والله لولا البلاء أو مصائب لقدمنا يوم القيامة مفاليس. إمام أحمد رحم الله تعالى he said that if it wasn't for the مصائب if it wasn't for the calamities and the trials and tribulations that Allah has given us in this life لقدمنا يوم القيامة مفاليس we would come on the day of judgment bankrupt. 
with nothing, no good deeds, because the majority of our good deeds is as a result of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يصيب مسلم, مسلم لا يصيب المسلم أو مؤمن نصب ولا وصب ولا أذى حتى شوك يشاقها إلا كفر الله منه الخطايا حتى يمشي على الأرض وليس عليه خطيئة وفي رواية قال لا يزال البلاء بالرجل في ماله وأهله وولده حتى يمشي على الأرض وفي رواية حتى يلقى الله وليس عليه خطيئة the Prophet وسلم, said that Allah will continue to test you over and over and over again in your wealth, in your health, with your children until you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa laysa alayhi khati'ah and there is no sin on you. And another narration until you are walking on the earth sinless. You are walking on the earth sinless, no sin upon you. So Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala he said that if it wasn't for the tests the trials and the tribulations that Allah has given us in this life, we would come on the day of judgment bankrupt, broke, with not much good deeds because most of our good deeds come to us by way of the tests, the trials and tribulations that Allah has given us. I'll leave you with six things that show the benefit that we get from fitna or masa'ib or bala. Trials and tribulations. Number one, through the tests we gain more than what we've lost. You look at when you're tried and tested. And then you look at after the test is over. Look at what you lost and look at what you gained in the process. You gain patience. The Prophet ﷺ said that no servant, عبدٌ, that no servant was given a, a gift, a hadiyah greater than sabr. Sabr, patience is a gift that you can't go in the store and buy. You have to go through trial and tribulation, life experience in order to receive patience. And once you get it, it's yours forever. Number two, you have a better understanding of yourself, your, your spiritual prowess. You have a better understanding of yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to test you with more than what you can handle. But when you see the test coming, you think, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. But after it's over with, you realize your strength, you realize your, your power, your ability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that before he tested you. Otherwise, he wouldn't have given you the test as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yukallifu allahu nafsin illa ma ataha. That Allah does not test the soul with more than he has given it the ability to bear. Number three, you get more deeds, more good deeds than you would have done before the test. When Allah tests you, you're doing good deeds, you're praying, you're fasting, you're doing everything to try to help you through this ordeal. And through that, you are earning more good deeds than you would have done had you not been tested. Number four, you have a better relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After the trial and tribulation is over with, look at your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The relationship that you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number five, you get a greater reward depending on the severity of the trial. The greater the trial, the greater the reward. And number six is an expiation of your sins that with every trial and every test and every pain that we, fear, that we feel, that we experience through our trials and tribulations, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is removing sin from you. Whether it is your emotional pain, your mental pain, your psychological pain, your physical pain, all of it is rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هذا وصل الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته